Hi again, welcome to part two of how to polish up your store's image. Let me ask you a question today. Do you have too many people walking or driving by and not enough coming into shop? If that's the case, then hang with me because I'm going to show you the things that you can do inside and outside your store today based on the image that your place should have, your property or your location. So stay tuned and we'll talk about that in a second. Hi, it's Linda McKendry with today's displays and I'm here to work with you if you're a small independently owned and operated retailer or product seller or vendor and um, I have done many years of consulting in the science and art of merchandising and display as it pertains to point of sale. And even though I work with small independents, I have been hired by corporations to work with their dealer networks and with their franchisees because they recognize that most of their stores um, are, are servicing a smaller community. So they have to have some of these ideas given to them so that the products look good and they sell more, pe more goods to more people faster. And we're studying image. So we know that image created plus image maintained is target marketing. And that's what I'm here to show you how to do by polishing up your store's image. We're continuing to look at how to polish up your store's image, which is identity. It is ideal and individual. It is the picture reflected to the buying public and the community. We looked at more detail about what image is in part one. And this is part two where we look at their place. What about outside? Well, 100% go by. Of that 100% that goes by outside, how, what percentage are you attracting or bringing into your store? On the inside, you have 100% control over what you do. And then we'll look further at part three with products and how we can polish up the store's image where your products are concerned and your presentations. And then in part four, we'll look at people and the price. The first impression your storefront makes is a huge part of what your image is. Let's look at a little list here of ways in which you can polish up your storefront well lit professionally designed signs, paint, siding, facades, awnings, arches, lattice or shutters, benches and bike stands, landscaping and sidewalk art, flower boxes, planters, potted trees, a welcome mat, windows for product presentations, a move to a better location. And I want to stop here for a minute and tell you that when I gave this seminar in Edmonton at a gift show, we had a couple hundred people in the seminar. I had asked the question, how many of you have moved in your location in the last couple of years? And a handful of hands went up. Then I said, how many of you were scared that you would lose business if you moved? And the same hands went up. Then I asked, how many of you moved? and we're glad that you did and wished you had done it sooner and the same hands went up so that told me a lot and the audience a lot about the fact that sometimes you do need to move to a better location let me show you a client of mine that did exactly that he moved from several streets back to the main street in jasper uh, alberta which is actually a resort town and everything there is seasonal you can see this is his business in the middle here. And he added this bench, which looks really good because it matches all the trim on the outside and attracts a little bit more attention to his space. Because it's seasonal, three businesses were operating in this location. Firstly, Edge Controlled Ski and Outdoor Store was my client's business. His wife ran a business out of there called Walks and Talks Jasper, which was busier in the summer than in the winter but she did it year round. And then the Rocky Mountain River Guides were raft, a river rafting uh, service and they were in there in the summertime as well. So that all worked out really well. Let's talk about distance versus eye level. I'm a fan of awnings because they're up high and can usually be seen from a distance as people are driving by or walking by. And I also like the way they cover the window and shade it enough that you can see inside a little bit better during the day. Here's another example of a, a, a hair salon. And you can see that again, as people are walking by, they can see where it is before they get there. 
and cars parked in front are still visible to the traffic going by. And when you walk up close, the eye level goes lower and you can see that this is a company that has their retail products stocked where you can see them. You could walk in quickly, make a purchase and walk out if that was what you needed it to do. Sometimes the outside of the store is actually inside, such as in a mall or a hotel or in hospitals. This is a hospital gift shop. This is North York in Toronto. And I did these corner windows and you can see that they're facing out on the corner and the display is done so it can be seen from both sides. And it's also very dense so that you can't see through it, but you're, when you look at it, you look right at it. The same with the Christmas display that was done here. Here's an example of a shop inside a store where we made some changes to for her image. And you can see one of the first things we did was we added this awning and the awning says flowers. So people knew it was a flower shop from a distance and they would be welcome to walk in. She happened to have this little antique sign, so we were able to hang that up there as well, just to add another little feature. Let's look at a few ways you can make changes in your store. And again, we're talking about without renovating. We're talking about things you can do quickly, easily, and inexpensively. And basically what you're doing, you're not only creating the image for your business as a whole when people walk in, but more than that, you are creating the places where the products are going to go and be displayed. So one way is a new layout and different traffic patterns to get your customers going different directions and seeing things in a different way. Upgrade your fixtures, new or refurbished. It's very inexpensive to repaint uh, fixtures, especially if they're, I'll call, paintable. Uh, new look on the walls, add color, texture, pattern, or even wallpaper when it's in style. Light, more light, and the right light always makes a difference to how things look. Even changing a bulb sometimes in existing fixtures makes all the difference in how this, your image is improved. Signage. The signage is designed to inform, direct, or promote. So look around at what you need to do to make your image better for that, from that point of view. And then look at your service stations, cash registers, and your gift wrap. Look at whether you think you need a rest area, a play area. Some customers, older ones, they'll stay longer if they can sit down for a bit or their spouse can sit down while they're shopping. And if you're catering to families, then having a play area for children is a good idea too to keep the parents in the store a little bit longer. Storage areas need to be out of sight, whether they're built into your fixtures or they're at the back of your store. Again, they need to be out of sight because that's all part of your image. Here are some things we did in edge control. We decluttered behind the surface counter. You can see the difference here and almost immediately. We also raised the counter six inches. You can see we simply did that by putting two two by fours underneath. It only needed to be raised six inches. Uh, we added the pendant lights and we painted this part of the wall gray and we painted the rest of the wall this uh, a bright yellow color and um, you can see that there was no reason for having two different colors. By painting it all one color, it made it look more spacious and everything kind of blended in and your eye was then looking more at what we wanted it to see. In addition to that though, uh, these images that were up there, we actually left them up there because they were very relevant, they looked good, and they were actually more visible once we did this. So you could see the difference here between the before and the after and just by moving and making those quick changes. 100% go by your windows at night too. You need less light at night than you do during the day so you can combat the black glass reflection from outside. And the one change we did here is we asked them to build a platform up to the bottom of the window so that we could put items in there when they would be seen and they wouldn't be cut off by the platform and they would be well above the people sitting on the bench outside. You can see that this is a summer window with summer and this is a winter window. We can also see that this was at Christmas time, so we do have the Christmas tree available. And I recommended that he buy these semi sheer panels to put in behind as a backdrop, which keeps the eye from going in and looking at everything and confusing, but at the same time, it lets the light in. This before picture was actually taken in the summertime and you can see the painting hadn't been done yet, things hadn't been changed up, and you can tell, see the white water rafting sinus up here for summer, 
Whereas in the winter, which is when we took the after picture, um, you could see that there's all the skis at the back because this area then becomes the area for the skis and for sharpening them and skates and things like that. But I wanted to point out that the we made we did special effects with paint because you can see that we had to deal with this um, HVAC running down the top and I wanted to make uh, it more seamless. I wanted to have the ceiling appear a little bit higher and I just didn't want that ugly thing so close down to where the products were. So that was painted yellow. The back wall was painted the gray that we used in other places. And then the portable, this uh, these change rooms which were portable, we just turned this one sideways here and we put the other one in a different location. Part of what we did in here too is that we created categories and within the categories we also color blocked so that the customer can go to one space and see what they need to see. The upsell, they have the uh, pants on the bottom and then the shirts on the top and then we color block the different colors. We've taken the color all the way to the ceiling here to make it higher and we put the dividers the same color as the back wall so that nothing is stopping your eye other than that you're just seeing one thing at a time. We also did the layout differently here. So you could see these were um, perpendicular to the wall. These are at an angle from the wall. So the customer goes in, they look back there, they, they are heading back to the end of aisle to look at things. And then when they turn around, instead of coming this way, that takes them back towards the front of the store, they're actually coming back this way and heading uh, further back into the store. So those are all good things to think about to increase your image. The takeaway here is well, to ask yourself, what are the first impressions of my store from the outside in? If you don't like the image your store has, what would you like to do to change it? Remember 100% go by what percentage of them are you attracting? This is the end of part two, so watch for part three, which is discussing products and presentations and how to polish up your image for them. And then part four will be how to polish up the image of your people and your price point. Keep in mind there are handouts for part two, which is a list of the ideas. If you're watching this on YouTube, there'll be a link below to go and find them. If, it, if you are taking the course, then you will automatically get a download as part of the course to get this list. Talk to you soon.